I used to believe that great chefs came about through a combination of luck and black magic. Good cooking is magic, but that magic comes because of skillfully applied techniques and science. Even if you don't have every kitchen appliance known to man, you can use science to create great dishes. That dish today is steak, and we're going to cook it in a beer cooler. The principle of cooking with this technique is based on the sous vide method. Basically, we're cooking our steak in a water bath set to a precise temperature. We'll cook it for 45 minutes to ensure the meat is a constant temperature throughout. Take a look at the chart to see what temperature your water bath needs to be based on how you want your steak cooked. 130 to 135 degrees Fahrenheit equals rare. 140 degrees Fahrenheit equals medium rare. 155 degrees Fahrenheit equals medium, and 165 degrees Fahrenheit equals shoe leather, or well done. Personally, I cook mine between 125 degrees Fahrenheit and 130 degrees Fahrenheit, a little more rare than most. Let's get started. First thing we've got to do is select our cut of meat. We're going to get some top sirloin from Safeway. It's on sale, $2.97 a pound great deal. Those steaks look pretty good. We're going to pick those up and take them home, get those prepped up. Here's our cooler right here, little Coleman cooler. We're going to put some hot water in that and get it all warm. I'm going to cook it at about 125 to 130 degrees today. Ziploc bags. These are double sealing bags, single seals. Sometimes you don't get them all the way and we want to avoid getting any water inside the bag. That wouldn't be good for our steak. So we'll just have to be careful. Some plastic straws for making our poor man's vacuum, which is going to help us get the air out of the inside of the bags once the steaks are in there. So very cheap, low tech, a little digital thermometer from Amazon. This is a meat thermometer. Cost maybe $11 or $12. Easy to pick up. And I've got the link at the top of the description of the video. Tongs for handling your meat. Don't read anything into that. Some seasoning there. I like the Montreal steak seasoning and real butter. You don't want to use margarine here because real butter is going to allow you to get that great sear on the steak and let it get nice and brown. Cast iron pan. We've had that in the family for about 40 years. Works awesome. Never wears out. And there's our little pretty steaks. Getting up to room temperature, I like to leave them on the counter for a bit to come up to room temperature. And a pot of water, which we're going to use to help keep our beer cooler water at the right temperature. We'll get that boiling in just a couple minutes. All right, there's our steaks. We're going to season those up here in just a second. The butter in our pan, not melting it yet. And our cooler with hot water already in it. This was tap water. It's about 120 degrees at our house. Okay, so we're seasoning up the steaks real quick. Doing this in quick time because... Probably don't want to sit through this whole thing and watch me do it in real time because I'm pretty slow. Okay, get them individ in individual Ziploc bags. Here we go. And we're actually only going to be able to cook two in this cooler because it's pretty small. So there's the two we're going we're gonna to cook. And then we're going to do our poor man's vacuum. We're going to put that straw on the side of the bag, seal the bag up the rest of the way so there's just enough room for the straw sealed on both sides. And we're going to actually... Suck the air out of the bag. Watch as it goes down just a little bit and creates kind of a little bit of a seal, but it works a lot better. You don't want to leave any air in the bag when you put it in the water because it's going to make the steaks float a little bit more. And they're already buoyant enough. So there we go. Take a look. Kind of a seal. Doesn't look too bad. Again, low tech. There's all three of our steaks. Again, we've only got room for two in this cooler. And you can see our cooler is coming up to temp just a little bit. Looks pretty good. Add some water, mix it around, make sure everything is an even temperature. And you can see we're getting there. And now we're going to add our steaks because we have gotten it up to the right temperature. They're ready to go though. And we're going to check these steaks in about five minutes because the water is going to cool down really quick because the steaks are not near the temperature that our water bath is at. So it's gonna cool that water off. We're gonna check it again in five minutes. 
add a little bit more water. And you'll see that here in just a second. So we have to add a little water. We're also going to have to take some out. It's getting kind of full. You could solve all these problems by using a bigger cooler, but I just wanted to show you an easy way to do it with the things you might have around the house. Add a little more water, take a little more away. Just maintain that temperature as close to what you want as possible. Okay, and this is all coming from the pot of water that's boiling on our stove. So we're pretty close there, 127, 128 degrees. Looks pretty good. Uh, just a little bit more. Okay, and here's our setup right here for doing the final sear after our steaks have gone that whole 45 minutes. And we've checked everything and they're cooked. We've got the butter in the pan starting to melt. We want to make sure we get that nice and hot. We're going to brown that. We're going to use a whole stick of real butter. Again, it's important to use real butter, not margarine. And you can see that cooking up a little bit. A little bit of spatter here and there. It's important to make sure your pan's dry before you actually put the butter in there. You'll watch that will melt it all down. It'll start to get brown. That's perfect right there. We don't want it too cool. We don't want it too hot. It's like the three bears. Okay, we're going to have our steaks resting on the counter, taken out of the bag. We need to blot those dry because there's a little, you know, the steaks have a little bit of moisture in them. And we don't want to put that in the pan with the butter because then you're going to get a lot of spatter and pop. And we want to want to avoid any burns. Okay, we've got those nice and dry. Watch this. We're going to do this one-handed move, one with the camera, one with the tongs. I don't recommend doing this at home. But when you're doing these tutorials by yourself, you don't have a choice. And look at that. There we go. For one minute, we're going to let it sear on high heat. Looking good. We won't show the whole minute because, again, you don't want to see that. Watch this. Look at that sear right there. Okay, that's lovely. That's the kind of crust we want on our steak. Looking pretty good. We're going to do both of them that way, and we're going to rest them after they're done. We're going to take them out and set them on the counter here in a second. There you go. Check that out. Looks beautiful. We're going to cut into this in a second. You're going to see the nice pink, very little gray on the edges, which we don't want to see with a traditionally cooked steak. And there you go. Check that out. Look at how nice and pink that is. That's my medium rare. Looks beautiful. That's how you cook your beer cooler steak. Enjoy.